I'm Dr. Tom Dieters, editor-at-large for Muscle & Fitness Magazine. I am thrilled and honored to welcome you to the Muscle & Fitness Training System. This series, developed by the world's leading cutting-edge sports medicine and bodybuilding experts, is devoted to showing you how to carve out exactly the physique you've always wanted, whether it's a strong, chiseled, lean body or the massive muscle of a champion bodybuilder. We're talking rock-hard abs, massive arms, a thick chest, and mighty back and powerful legs. All of these are now within your reach because with this series you'll learn the exercises and the programs to achieve the physique you desire. legs, a broad chiseled back. These instantly convey a magnetic animal strength as well as powerful athleticism. In this program, we're going to help you develop your back and legs with the support of our premier bodybuilding champions. They will show you how to isolate those hard to get at smaller muscles as well as how to either define or bulk up those big powerful workhorses, your quads, your hams, and your lats. Why do we turn to bodybuilders to learn the tools and techniques for maximum efficiency and maximum safety? We go to bodybuilders because they are the experts. You don't have to look like them. You don't have to lift like them. But you do want to learn from them. If you wanted to learn how to play basketball, you might study with Michael Jordan. How to swing a bat? Mark McGuire. Well, if you want to learn the details and strict control that strength training can offer you, you want to watch Gunther Schlierkamp and our other champions, and you want to watch them closely. The truth is that the same techniques that are used every day by the top bodybuilders in the world can also be used by you. No matter what your age, no matter what shape you're in, whether you want huge bulging legs and a broad back or lean powerful legs with a muscular shapely back. Before we get to the gym, let's talk about your back and legs. Your lats, which is short for latissimus dorsi, are the largest muscles on the upper body. They extend from under the shoulders down to the lower part of the back on both sides, and their job is to pull the shoulders and arms downward into the back. Below the lats are your spinal erectors. These muscles run like two telephone cables from your waist to your skull, just parallel to your spine. They support and protect the spine from injury, as well as the name suggests, to help us stand erect. We develop the erectors in this program in conjunction with your strengthening of the abdominals, as you will see in the ab program, to help you develop a powerful, injury-resistant lower back. We all know the glutes, gluteus maximus, gluteus medius, for they are the large muscles that span across your posterior portion and are powerful extensors of your leg. In other words, they help you bring your leg back behind you and help you stand from a sitting or squatting position. Most of the glute sculpting exercises involve squats and leg presses. Your quads or quadriceps compose the muscles on the front of the thigh. They include four muscles, the rectus femoris, vastus lateralis of the outer thigh, vastus medialis of the inner thigh, and the sartorius, all of which work together to extend or straighten the leg. In the case of the sartorius, this muscle can also flex the hip joint. On the rear of the leg, we have the hamstring group, including the biceps femoris, or leg biceps, and semimembranosus and semitendinosus. These are your leg flexors, which help to curl your heel up to your glutes. As with the arm exercises, the leg biceps exercise mostly involve curling motions and also extension at the hips. Below the knee are what is commonly referred to as the calves. This muscle group consists of the gastrocnemius and the soleus, both of which insert into the Achilles tendon, which then attaches to the heel or calcaneus. When contracted, these muscles point the toe. As the first step to any workout, spend about five minutes warming up your body. That means literally getting the blood flowing, raising the heartbeat, core temperature, and metabolic rate 
with a few minutes of aerobic exercise. Stationary bike, treadmill, jump rope, whichever you prefer and whatever gets your motor running. Get into a groove. Don't waste the moment. Don't just look around. For these five minutes, start visualizing what you want to accomplish in your workout. See your goals and see yourself charging toward them. Think like a pro, grow like a pro. Let me say a word about the Back and Legs program. Our expert staff has designed four distinct programs, which I'll now take you through. First, the Mass Gain Back Workout. Second, the Advanced Detail Back Sculpting Workout for those of you who don't want to gain mass, but detail what you've got. Third, we'll show you our Mass Gain Leg Workout for those who want to build leg mass. And finally, the Muscle Defining Leg Workout to help you work and define the leg musculature you've already gained. Let's start with the Mass Gaining Program. Ready? We've designed a killer five exercise program for those of you who want a broader, more powerful back. We're going to start with the bent over barbell row. Five sets of 12, 10, 8, 6, and 6, pyramiding up weight each set. Second, we'll demonstrate the barbell deadlift. Again, pyramiding up weight each of four sets, 10 reps at first, then 8, 8, and 6. We'll follow that with the pull down to the front. Three sets of 8, 8, and 10, starting heavier than lightening up for the third set. The fourth exercise is a seated cable row. Three sets, pyramiding down weight, 8 reps, then 10, and 10 again. Then we'll finish this program with a good morning, two sets of 10. The bent over barbell row is a staple mass builder for back width and thickness. And with slight variations, you can target different muscles up and down your entire back. Stand with a shoulder width stance with a wide enough grip to allow your elbows to pull back behind your body. Keeping your knees bent slightly, lean forward from the waist until your torso is about 30 degrees above horizontal, head up, looking forward. The barbell should hang down in front of your shins. This is a starting position. Inhale and hold your breath to steady your torso and pull the bar towards your waist, not your chest. Keep your elbows in close to your sides so that they move rearward as you pull the bar upward. Concentrate on pulling with your back and shoulder muscles, not with your arms, and pull back those elbows as high as possible. In the top position, your elbows should be well above the level of your back. Give attention to your lower spinal erectors as you focus on maintaining the normal curvature of your spine. Keep your torso steady no swaying or jerking. Lower the barbell under perfect control. You'll notice that when you pull the bar to your waist, the lower fibers of your latissimus dorsi are doing most of the pulling. When your elbows come out more to your sides, you're recruiting more of your upper fibers along with your middle traps, rhomboids, and rear deltoids. To recruit more of your upper back, including your rear deltoids, pull the barbell more toward your chest. This is a more difficult variant but very effective. Because the weight's moving higher, be extra sure your stance is stable and your torso is locked and stable and always start with a lighter weight. The deadlift is a classic and supremely effective compound movement where you can really develop overall body power, especially in your glutes, your hams, and your lower back. No surprise here, that you're going to have to concentrate on your spinal position, which means holding your breath during both the up and the down phases. Keep your head up and avoid rounding your shoulders and never flex or overextend your spine during any part of this exercise. Needless to say, if you're feeling any spinal pain or discomfort or you find your body swaying to make the lift, lighten up on your weights. Stand erect, holding the barbell with about a shoulder width grip your arms extended, and the barbell resting against your thighs. Now contract the muscles of your lower back to lock in the normal curvature of your spine. Then inhale slightly more than usual and hold your breath as you bend over at the hips while bending at the knees. Now push your hips to the rear as you bend your knees, keeping the normal spinal curvature. Incline your trunk forward. Lean in until your torso is inclined about 40 to 45 degrees forward. 
If you sense that your normal spinal curvature is shifting, don't incline any further. Keep your head and shoulders up and back. That helps keep the energy focused away from your arms. Now raise your trunk back to the erect position. Push your hips forward as you pull your trunk gently backward and upward. When you hit the point of most difficulty on the up face, exhale forcefully and pause momentarily when you reach the full erect standing position. Remember, you want full extension here to most effectively work your glutes and hams. Don't cheat yourself. Now inhale and repeat into reps. This is one of the best power movements. First, get settled at the lat pull-down machine so that the bar overhead is directly in front of your body. For variety, you can perform the pull-down with a wide grip to stress the upper lats or a more narrow grip to work the lower lats. Let's start wide. Make sure your feet are in full contact with the floor and adjust the machine so the pads fit snugly over your thighs. Grasp the angled ends of the long pull-down bar with your palms facing away. Keep your torso erect, your arms fully extended, and your shoulders elevated in the shape of a wide letter Y. If you have to stand up to grasp the bar, be sure to pull the bar down and then sit down and secure your thighs before you begin. Your arms should be fully extended and your shoulders elevated when you begin the pull down. So you get a full range of motion and optimal development of the upper latissimus dorsi. To initiate, inhale slightly more than usual and hold your breath as you pull down. Squeeze your shoulder blades together and pull down, leading with your elbows. Pull the bar straight down in front of your head to shoulder and upper chest level. As you pull, keep your elbows back slightly and pointed out toward the sides. Imagine that you're bringing your chest up to meet the bar to prevent you from cheating and rounding your back, which will take your lats out of it. Try also to think of your hands as merely hooks. Your biceps shouldn't do the work. Instead, drive your elbows back and down. Exhale as you finish the movement and hold the down position before returning, under control, back to the start position. A couple of maximum performance tips to remember. Hold that breath on the pull down. It stabilizes your torso and creates the abdominal base the muscles can most effectively pull from. If you want to work your biceps, lower lats, and other elbow flexors, try doing reps with a supinated, palms facing you grip, like this. As always, be careful not to jerk or swing with the movement. Let's start right off with the biggest mistake people make with the seated cable row. Failure to keep the torso nearly erect. With the row, you're going to pull your elbows and shoulder blades back as far as they can go but not, repeat, not by leaning backwards. Similarly, you don't want to be curling with your biceps or twisting hard with your wrists. We're focusing our muscle tension and our mind on the back. Let's work through this. Hook the handle to a low pulley cable and sit upright on the bench facing the weight stack. Place your feet against the foot platform so that your legs are slightly bent in the start position. Lean forward from your hips to grasp the handle, your palms facing inward while maintaining a normal, slightly arched spinal curvature. Pull back until your torso is nearly erect and your arms are fully extended. This is your start position. Now, inhale and hold your breath as you pull the handles toward your midsection. Keep your elbows in line with the side of your body. Pull until your elbows are slightly beyond the plane of your back and your hands are close to your body. You should be pulling your shoulders and elbows to the rear as far as possible as you exhale at the top. Hold for two seconds, then return to the start position under control. The good morning is an excellent movement to strengthen your hams, glutes, and lower back. The key here is to keep your head up as you bend over. And, as with all lifts of this kind, be mindful of your back. Begin by standing upright with your feet shoulder-width apart, grasping a barbell across the back of your shoulders with a wide grip. Bend your knees slightly for balance and keep the slight natural arch in your lumbar spine at all times. Now, 
Inhale slightly more than usual and hold your breath as you lean forward from your hips. You don't need to go that far down to work your erectors. Push your hips backwards as your torso comes forward and down to horizontal. Then reverse direction smoothly and exhale as you return to the starting position and repeat into reps. Okay, again, protect your back. Don't go too low because that will round your back. You want to keep that arch as you go down and your head up. In general, you want to start this exercise with relatively light weights or even no weights at all so that you can train yourself to perform it with perfect form. In fact, many athletes use this exercise with light or no weights as a warm-up to stretch out the hams, the back, and the glutes. So focus on form and keep your back arched. Remember, you only get one spine, so please take care of it. For those of you who want to sculpt definition into your back, you won't find a better program than this five exercise progression. We're going to start with the T-bar row. Four sets of 12, then 10, 10 again, then 8, pyramiding up the weight in each set. Second, we'll execute the pull-up, three sets of 10 or to failure, whichever comes last. Third is a one-arm dumbbell row, three sets of 10, 10, then 12, starting heavier, then lightening up on the third set. Fourth, we'll take you through the straight arm press down, three sets of 15, keeping the same weight. And we'll finish this very focused program with the back extension, two sets of 25. Let's get to it. The T-bar row uses the machine to help you isolate your lats and middle back with minimum momentum. You're going to want to pay special attention to the start position, where you want to fully extend your arms before beginning. It's crucial to continue to extend fully without bouncing every time you reach the bottom position in order to work your muscles completely and help assure that you don't compromise your development. Let's get started. Lean against the bench with your chest against the support pad and your feet either flat on the floor or on the foot rests that are provided. With your arms fully extended, grasp the handles with a neutral grip, palms facing toward each other, or use whatever type of grip the machine allows for. Inhale fairly deeply and hold your breath as you pull the handles toward you, keeping your elbows close to your body. Concentrate on pulling with your back and shoulder muscles and not your biceps. Keeping your torso steady, pull until your elbows are as far beyond your back as possible, squeezing every bit of contraction you can from the exercise. Drive your elbows back. Here, hold at the maximum contraction, then exhale and return to the start position, maintaining perfect control. There are lots of ways of doing pull-ups. Palms out, palms back, narrow grip, wide grip, and you should make use of all of them to work the smaller muscles of your back and shoulder groups. So jump up or climb up to your horizontal bar and grasp it with an overhand grip, hang loosely, extending your arms, relaxing your shoulders to start fully stretching your lats. To begin, inhale slightly more than usual and hold your breath as you contract your lats to pull yourself up. Concentrate here on keeping your elbows out to your sides and pulling them down to raise yourself. Don't recruit your biceps during the pull-up action. Think of your hands only as hooks and focus all your muscular contraction here in your lats. Arch up to meet the bar. Exhale through the hardest part of the up phase and keep contracting until you pull your chin slightly above the bar. Keep your head upright and straight. Hold and exhale as you lower your body to the start position, always under control. Here's another maximum performance tip. The closer you grip, the more you're involving the lower portions of the latissimus dorsi and middle back muscles. The one-arm dumbbell row is an excellent way to work your back and shoulder muscles one side at a time. Begin by taking a wide stride stance with one leg forward and one out to the side. Lean forward from the hips until your torso is parallel to the floor, keeping a slight arch in your lower back and bending your knees. 
Put your inside hand on the bench for stability and grasp a dumbbell on your outside hand with a neutral grip so your palm faces your body. Take advantage of full extension by allowing your working arm to hang straight down, relaxing and lowering your shoulder. Inhale slightly more than usual and hold your breath as you pull the dumbbell upward hard. Concentrate on pulling with your shoulder and back muscles to drive your elbow up with your chest out, keeping your elbow in line with your shoulder the whole way up and lifting as high as possible above the level of your back as you exhale. Raise your working shoulder at the top point only slightly, but don't roll it to get the weight up. Focus on keeping your shoulder contracted and your shoulder and back parallel to the floor. Hold this top position for a second or two, then return to the start position. Run through your reps with one arm, then work your other side. A couple of muscle and fitness tips. If you feel your body twisting or you're jerking your shoulder hard at the top of the up phase, lighten up on your weights. You want perfect form. You want maximum contraction of the shoulder without popping it up at the end. And you want to concentrate on pulling with your shoulder and back muscles only, not your whole torso and not your biceps. And one final thing, if you want to recruit more of your upper back, try a pronated grip like this, palm facing rearward. Just be sure to keep your elbow in line with your shoulder as you pull up. The straight arm lat pull down targets your lats differently because you're going to keep your arms straight throughout the movement. Stand about a foot away from the pulley facing the stack. Grasp a straight bar with a pronated, that's palms away, shoulder width grip, and angle your arms 15 to 20 degrees forward from vertical. Keep your elbows bent just slightly. To start, inhale and hold your breath as you pull down with straight arms throughout the range of motion. Focus your mind on pulling from the shoulders only until the bar is hip high. Keep your torso erect as you pull down, contracting the muscles of the lower back to maintain this posture. Hold the contraction in the bottom position for up to two seconds, keeping your back straight at all times. As you move into reps under strict control, be careful not to lean into the cable, which will feel easier but will reduce the stress on the muscles. If you feel yourself bending or if you notice that you're flexing your elbows to complete the exercise, lighten up the weights and focus more on repetitions. Those are indicators that you're recruiting extraneous muscles to do your work. Remember, your arms are just hooks. Keep your concentration and the tension in your lats. If you want some variations, go narrower to target your lower lats and hit the long head of the triceps and wider on the angled part of the handle to work your upper lats and Terry's Major's muscles. The back extension is by far the best exercise to strengthen your lower back muscles. Take your position on the chair, lying face down and locking your ankles in under the rollers or pads. Allow your upper body to hang down, place your hands behind your head, inhale and holding your breath, curl your torso up in a controlled motion. Try to extend a little bit beyond a straight body line, arching your back just slightly at the peak position. Hold that for a second or two, then exhaling, return to the start position and move steadily into reps, keeping continuous tension on your spinal erectors. Try to keep in mind that at all times you are drawing all the arching motion from your lower back and nowhere else. Now we're going to focus on putting mass on your legs with six specialized exercises. We'll begin with the barbell squat. Five sets, paramating up the weight with each set, 12 reps, 10, 8, 6, and 6 again. Second, we'll pyramid down in the hack squat. Four sets, six reps twice, then eight, then ten. Third, we'll demonstrate the Romanian deadlift. Three sets of ten, ten, and eight, adding extra weight on the third set. Fourth, we'll pyramid down again, this time with the leg extension. Three sets of eight, ten, and ten. Fifth is a lying leg curl. Two sets of ten, then twelve, also pyramiding down. And finally, the standing calf raise. Three sets of 15, 12, then 12, pyramiding up with each set. 
These six exercises will provide you with an extremely thorough mass building workout for your legs. Perhaps nowhere is form more important as it is with the barbell squat. It's critical that you keep your head up throughout the movement and drop your glutes down and back as if doing a deep knee bend and sitting in a chair. The thing you want to guard against is rounding your back. Let's move through it. Start by standing erect with your feet about shoulder width apart and your toes turned slightly out. Hold the barbell behind your neck, across your shoulders, resting on your upper traps. Check your balance. Check that your weight is even on both feet. Now, inhale slightly more than usual as you flex your knees and hips to slowly lower your body as if you were going to sit down in a chair. Your knees should come forward slightly, your glutes back and down, and your heels should stay firmly planted on the floor throughout. And, this is critical, your torso should incline forward up to 45 degrees from vertical, but no more. Concentrate on lowering your hips while maintaining just the slightest normal spinal curvature. Do not bend your back forward as you squat. At the bottom position, your thighs should be nearly horizontal. Then push firmly up through your feet and press your hips forward as you rise. As you start to hit the sticking point, begin your exhale and complete the exhalation when you're standing, pausing momentarily, then repeat into reps. The beauty of the hack squat machine is that it allows you to squat without worrying so much about balance as you would with a free bar squat. Think of the hat squat as a wall squat, that it might help you keep your torso erect and even though you're leaning back, help you maintain a natural curvature in your lower spine. Think legs. Think aligned spine. Let's give it a go. Facing away from the machine, stand under the resistance pads so they rest comfortably on your shoulders. Place your feet about hip width apart on the support platform. Keeping your torso erect and your back snug against the support pad, look directly forward so that your neck and head are aligned with your spine at all times. Looking straight ahead, inhale slightly more than usual and hold your breath and lower your body down into a squat. As you descend, your knees should travel directly over your middle toes. Move with focused control until your thighs are about parallel to the platform, meaning your knees should be bent about 90 degrees. Keep holding your breath as you transition from the down into the up phase. No bouncing, driving smoothly up but forcefully with your legs. Exhale as you pass a sticking point, wherever it feels hardest, and hit the start position, pause, and then repeat into reps. Here's a maximum performance tip. If you want to hit your glutes a bit more, squat deeper throughout your reps. And a final word about breathing, and I don't mind repeating myself because it's crucial. Do not exhale during the transition from down to up phase. Exhaling at the wrong time reduces your internal torso pressure and therefore reduces your spinal stability and your power. So hold your breath right up through the sticking point higher during the up phase. For the Romanian deadlift, I'd like you to keep one simple metaphor in mind. Pretend that you're a rigid lever with a board straight torso and board straight legs. The only movement happens at the axis, which is your hip joints. Do this and you'll be isolating your hams and glutes just like you want. Start by standing upright with your feet roughly hip width apart and your legs straight. Hold the barbell in both hands with a pronated or palms toward your grip. Inhale and hold your breath as you lean forward from your hips, pushing them rearward and directing the pressure down through your heels. Do not pull with your arms, which you can think of as loose hooks. Contrarily, focus on keeping your lower back muscles, your erectors, strong to maintain a rigid spine and your shoulders pulled back slightly to prevent overrounding. If you find that you are rounding your spine as you lower, stop the movement immediately. Restart your reps with reduced weights. After reaching the bottom position, continue to hold your breath and maintain the arch in your lower back as you lift your torso and push your hips forward. Remember the metaphor, everything's straight but for the lever of your hips. When you reach top position, your torso should be erect and your shoulders still pulled slightly back. And as I said, your legs should be as straight as possible, though if your hamstrings are tight and burning, 
you can certainly bend your knees slightly. With the leg extension, your thighs are supported by the seat and resistance pad on your lower shins. Sit comfortably with your thighs in full contact with the seat. Place your lower shins against the resistance pad so your knees form a 90 degree angle. Grasp the handles alongside of the seat for stability. Now, inhale slightly more than usual and hold your breath, then straighten your legs to full extension. Pause here for a couple of seconds, exhale, then inhale as you slowly return to the near vertical shin position maintaining tension in all your muscles at all times and always under strict control. Then move into your reps. The lying leg curl is a bodybuilding favorite and for good reason. It's a solid hamstring workout but once again you've got to keep strict form and get full contractions. Lie down on a leg curl bench. One that's angled in the middle is preferable because it stretches the hamstrings a bit better. Position your knees just beyond the far edge of the bench and adjust the rollers so that they rest against the back of your ankles. Grasp the hand grips or sides of the bench, inhale, hold your breath and flex your knees to raise your feet against the rollers, exhaling only as you reach the top of the movement. In this top position your shin should be vertical or slightly beyond. Hold here for two seconds, then, under control, return to your start position with a healthy, moderate pace. Get your full extension at the bottom, and without pausing or jerking, focus explosive energy to get the uplift going again. Pro tip, in this exercise, you don't want to move too slowly, especially with heavy weights, because the weight is so concentrated on the single joint. This exercise works both major calf muscles and should remain one of your calf training mainstays. Start by slipping your shoulders under the pads and placing the balls of your feet on the foot platform so that your heels are free to move through a full range of motion. Point your toes straight forward or slightly outside for a minor variation in stress of your calf muscle groups. Put your full body into complete alignment, head, shoulders, hips, feet, one straight pillar of power. Now, lower your heels at a moderate speed until you feel a strong stretch in your Achilles tendons here and in your calf muscles. As you reach the bottom position, inhale slightly more than usual and holding your breath, push vigorously but smoothly to rise as high as possible. Hold this top position for up to two seconds, then relax slightly, lower your heels under strict control, exhale and rise again immediately. Then move into your reps. Don't pause at the bottom unless you're trying to increase ankle flexibility. For muscle development, you want to maintain the tension and never let up. To scope and define your leg muscles, we're now going to review a six exercise program beginning with the Smith Machine Squat. This is a pyramiding up exercise with each of the four sets at 12 reps, then 10, 10 again, then 8. Second is a leg press with three sets of 10 to 12 reps, then two more sets at a slightly lighter weight of 12, then 15. Third is the barbell lunge, three sets of 12 reps with the same weight each time. Fourth, the seated leg curl, three sets of 15. Finally are two calf raises, the leg press calf raise, pyramiding up, three sets of 20, 15, then 12 reps, and the seated calf raise, two sets of 15. The Smith Machine Back Squat is an excellent alternative to regular bar squats. Since you don't have to worry about balance as much, you can focus even harder on form. A deep squat on the bottom, full extension at the top, back straight, and gaze focused forward. Looking up or down during any part of the movement can rob you of power and stress your back. Start by resting the bar on your traps. Place your feet about a foot in front of your hips, about shoulder width apart. Your hips should align directly beneath your shoulders. Maintain the slight natural curve in your lower back. Inhale and hold your breath as you bend your knees into the squat, all the way down to right angles, your thighs about parallel to the floor. 
don't let your breath out and don't bounce, but push forcefully up with your legs to press the bar up. Focus all that energy in your thighs, not your back, and exhale only when you hit the sticking point on the top phase. To vary, if you want to get a greater stretch in your glutes and hams, squat slightly beyond the 90 degree position. Careful here with high weights though, this puts extra stress on your knees and only you can judge if you're going down too far. Want to push yourself? Here's your chance. The classic leg press allows you to use much more weight than you would in any of the standing squats. But that doesn't mean you should lose focus on your back or starting to round it. So let's load up the plates and move through the leg press. Sit in a leg press machine and put your feet about shoulder width apart against the resistance platform. You should feel pressure throughout the entire soles of both feet and especially in the heels. Now with your hips back against the back support, release the locking levers at the side of the seat, then straighten your legs to full extension, but don't lock out. This is your starting position. Inhale slightly more than usual and hold your breath as you bend your knees. Lower slowly until you reach about a 90 degree bend in your knees. Then, still maintaining your breath and concentrating on your glutes and legs, push up forcefully, straight out, exhaling as you pass through the sticking point about halfway up. Inhale at the top, extend but don't lock your knees, don't hyperextend, pause for only a moment and repeat into reps. Some final thoughts. Don't bend your knees so far that they touch your chest. The closer they come, the more you'll tend to curve your lower back and the greater the chance of injury. If you want to vary the movement, place your feet higher or lower on the platform for a different stress on your glutes and other leg muscles. The barbell lunge is an extremely effective move, working your glutes, hams, and quads. Let's look at the lunge. Stand with your feet pointed straight ahead, about shoulder width apart. Take a wide grip on the barbell, holding the weight behind your neck, across your shoulders, and resting on your traps. Step forward with one leg, using a long stride, making sure your front knee doesn't travel past your toes. As your front foot gently lands, bend both knees to lower your body. Keep your torso erect, your eyes forward, your chest out, and your back slightly arched to prevent curving your spine forward. Keeping your back knee off the floor, bend your forward knee to a 90 degree angle. Watch the forward knee. Don't go too far. As you touch the bottom position, relax into it, exhaling smoothly and feeling the stretch in your back leg. Now, in this position, you should feel tension in your front leg, hip, and lower back, as well as a strong stretch in your hip flexors, here. To raise back up, inhale, holding the breath, and press explosively but smoothly through your front foot to return to a standing position, bringing both legs together. The seated leg curl lets you hit your hams in a slightly different way. Make sure that your knees clear the edge of the seat, allowing for full range of movement of the knee joints. Place the back of your lower shins against the resistance pads or rollers with legs extended. Hold the handles and lean back into the backrest. Inhale and hold your breath as you curl your lower legs down at a moderate speed. Keep your toes pointed directly upward as you bend your legs. Exhale only as you reach full 90 degree angle in your knees and hold that position for two seconds for maximal contraction. Then return to the starting position under control and repeat for reps. This exercise really best targets the development of strength and mass through shortened range of motion. So, unlike many of the exercises in this bodybuilding system, don't worry about getting full extension. Here, you can pile on the plates. Sitting, you want to make sure that your glutes and lower back will remain in firm contact with the seat pads throughout. Place the balls of your feet a comfortable width apart and at the bottom edge of the resistance platform so that your heels are free to move. You can vary your toes from pointing straight up to pointing out a little to change the stress slightly on the calf muscle group. 
As far as your knees go, it's imperative that you keep them straight, but don't lock them at any point during this exercise to avoid unnecessarily stressing the knee joint. Now, grip the machine's side handles to stabilize your upper body, which you want to keep relatively still throughout. Inhale and hold your breath as you get up on your tiptoes at a slow, steady speed. Extend and hold that position for two seconds. Really squeeze it to maximally contract your calves. Exhale as you return under strict control until you feel a slight stretch in your calves. Pause only momentarily and repeat for reps. A couple of pro tips. Wear shoes with good traction and be sure the surface of the platform isn't slippery. The last thing you want is your feet sliding off it during any phase of the movement. The seated calf raise targets the soleus muscle, which is the muscle just beneath the more bulging gastrocnemius. With this exercise, it's critical that you work through the full range of motion, holding your peak contraction at the top for a few extra seconds and getting a full stretch at the bottom. Before we start, if you're wearing high top shoes, loosen them around the ankles. If you want to hold the sides of your seat to make sure your body is stable, feel free to do so. Okay, let's go. Sit upright at the machine and place your feet on the foot platform so the balls of your feet are in full contact and your heels can move freely throughout a full range of motion. Inhale slightly more than usual and hold your breath as you raise up on your heels as high as possible as you move the safety bar or release lever away. Now really hold this uppermost position, then lower your heels as far as you can, getting a full stretch there too. Full extension is the key to this exercise, so don't shortchange yourself either at the top or bottom ends of the movement. Equally important, at the bottom, don't pause. Just reverse direction smoothly and immediately and repeat into reps to maintain continuous tension on the muscle. A few pro tips. Because the soleus is an endurance type muscle, you should do more reps in this exercise than the standing calf raise. So check your journal and set an appropriate goal, for example, 15 to 20 reps. Also, to stress the fibers of all the muscle belly, vary your workout by turning your toes slightly in one-third of the time, slightly out one-third of the time, and straight forward one-third of the time. This will bring balance and fuller development of the overall lower leg musculature. There are three crucial, non-optional steps you must do to wrap up your workout. Warm down, stretch, and replenish. I don't consider these as part of a post-workout routine because every serious trainer knows that these elements are as essential to your program as any lift, crunch, or pull-down. When you're finished with your workout, move into a five-minute, low-intensity aerobic exercise. Hit your bike, the treadmill, or whatever suits you best, but keep your heart rate under 100 beats per minute. This allows your metabolism to slow gradually and your body to recover in a controlled fashion. The second step of wrapping up your workout is to stretch the muscles you have just worked. For more detail on the importance of stretching, refer to the stretching pod at the end of this program. For now, remember that you should move through stretches with slow, deliberate, controlled movements with no bouncing or jerking. Take particular care to stretch your back well. Despite its strength, it is surprisingly delicate and can be easily injured. To stretch your upper back, your rhomboids, trapezius, and latissimus dorsi, which run here, stand with your feet together about three feet away from a bar or railing just above waist height. Grab the bar with an overhand grip, Fully extend your arms, exhale, and slowly bend from the waist, keeping your back arched until you feel the stretch working in your back. For your neck, stand with your shoulders square looking forward. Slowly tilt your head to one side, hold, then the other. Make sure your shoulders don't move. For increased flexibility, roll your head gently in a full circular motion and repeat five times. To stretch your quads, hold on to anything you can for balance. Bend one leg backward and bring your heel toward your glute. 
Exhale and pull your heel in a little further, relaxing into it, keeping the thigh of the pulled leg in line with that of the straight leg. Hold for a good 15 to 20 seconds and repeat for each side three or four times. For the hamstrings, sit on a bench and extend one leg in front of you, the opposite foot on the floor. Put your hands behind your head and, as you exhale, keep your back straight and bend at your hips slowly, trying to touch your torso to your thigh. Try with a straight or slightly bent knee. That's the best way to isolate the hams. For your inner thighs, sit on the floor with your legs bent and your feet together in front of you. Pull your feet and ankles as close to your groin as possible. With your back straight, exhale and bend forward at the hips. Hold that as far as possible for a good 20 seconds. Then relax and repeat three or four times. For your calves, stand with the balls of your feet on the edge of a step or a platform behind a bench press. As you exhale, slowly and gently lower your heels to the floor. Hold for 20 seconds. Relax and repeat a few times. Kevs love to lock up, so take your time with this one and help them recuperate. Replenish your body right after you're finished training. See the nutrition segment of this program for more information. Truly successful resistance training has as much to do with the power of your mind as it does with the size of your legs or the thickness of your back. With all the insight and expertise our team has brought you throughout this system, I want to make sure that one crucial point comes through loud and clear. Concentration means everything. Not just physically concentrating tension in your muscles, but mentally concentrating on technique, preparation, nutrition, and very importantly, on staying motivated. What motivates the most successful strength trainers? You might think it's massive sexy thighs or increased athletic skill or weight loss or improved metabolic health. Sure, all these things do go a long way. But true motivation, the kind of motivation that will stay with you through the hard times when results aren't showing up quite as fast as you would like, comes from here. Every time you perform a squat or pull down, you should be mentally tracking every element of the movement. That means you're watching your breathing pattern and your technique. You're on guard against recruiting extraneous muscles and against throwing your body around to compensate for too much weight on the bar. It means you're concentrating on your quads or your lats or whichever muscle you're working while you work them. Imagine that they are exploding right through your skin as you fully extend and contract them throughout the entire range of motion. Shut out all external influences and master your mental focus.